If Pokemon was rebooted, how could the narrative change and in what ways could the Pokedex evolve? Before I attempt to reboot any of the game's mechanics, I want to focus on narrative design. After all, players most often experience a game's mechanics through the filter of the game's narrative. Or to look at it another way, how well a designer creates the narrative and supporting lore will help a player submerge themselves in the fantasy using those mechanics. Naturally, I will refer back to this topic in future episodes because of how narrative context in Pokemon affects all aspects of the franchise. With such a broad influence, it makes sense to do this first. What I put forward in this one will definitely come up in my other narrative-based topics since they'll be expanding on these foundations. But before I get into my thoughts, let's have a look at a few things we know about the world of Pokemon and why those elements exist. With just a quick survey of the world of Pokemon, there is a lot to it. There's references to ancient civilizations, lore about how Pokemon shaped the Earth and even the universe. There are sprawling cities where people and Pokemon work together. However, somehow it all just feels rather shallow. Whenever little hints such as these are given about the world, there is a heck of a lot left unspoken and the details are kept extremely vague. Of course, this is done intentionally and for good reason. Any information not given about a game world gives future games some wiggle room to fill in that information. This is definitely true for the Pokemon World Society. As I mentioned in my episodes about remapping the world of Pokemon, if you never give the players a world map, then you can fill it in and expand it however you want, forever. For an in-game example, we know humans and Pokemon have lived together for a long time, as there are mentions of Pokemon being worshipped by ancient cultures. Just read the Pokedex entries for Arcanine, Unknown, or some legendary Pokemon to see what I mean. But despite the long history between humans and Pokemon, the professors were baffled by the discovery that Pokemon lay eggs. What? So people invented computers, teleporter pads, advanced medicine, even just housing and agriculture, but not once did they come across this extremely common occurrence in nature? I know, I know, this is a children's game and it had to accommodate for a children's anime. They wanted to introduce a new mechanic, and how better to do it than using the Pokemon professors who study all aspects of Pokemon. But it still didn't make much narrative sense. Back when the second generation was released, I was in their target demographic, 10 years old. I wasn't stupid. Most 10-year-olds aren't. Even I thought it was a bit of a stretch that they knew nothing about it. However, one of the things we know today is that a large number of Pokemon players are adults. Should that be something kept in mind moving forward for Pokemon? Now, I'm not suggesting that we bring in darker themes and mature content into the games. None of that is required to make something more quote-unquote adult. What I mean is, should we treat the player like someone who can handle a more sophisticated level of mystery and complexity? Heck, we crave that mystery so much that dozens upon dozens of theory videos have been based on Pokemon because we keep finding narrative holes and wanting to fill them in. Again, those holes only exist because the game's world is kept very vague and simplified. I think it is worth noting that complex worlds and darker themes won't necessarily have a negative impact on children. Haven't you ever rewatched a movie you loved as a child only to discover a whole new level of subtext you hadn't noticed back then? Didn't you still enjoy that movie, even though you missed the subtext when you were younger? Good. Multi-layered media is still enjoyable even if you pick up on the topmost layer of meaning. Besides, The Lion King is a children's movie, and that had cold-blooded murder in it. The biggest note I want to make here is that since the franchise has gone on for so long, and since we know a lot about what to expect in that world, a reboot could do a lot to refine those narrative details. We can create a world that feels lived in, that has a deep history we can bite into and answers to questions and mysteries that only the keenest eyed players will find resolution to. Of course, not all information is going to be squirreled away in mystery. After all, there are some basics that first time players need to know and each game is going to be someone's first, but the narrative doesn't need to be dumbed down to accommodate them. Part of making a world that feels lived in means creating characters with dialogue that sounds like it would actually be said in that world, not just said for the player behind the screen. 
how the world works and other information from the previous games would naturally come out of conversation between characters, as they're just facts that already exist in their world. Much of the language in the mainline games is rather, did you know that Pokemon evolve? Even children get tired of being talked down to like this. While we want new players to be brought up to speed, surely it doesn't need to be so spoon-fed. Okay, on to today's topic. I want to do an exercise with Pokemon's narrative elements by using a little game I call If True, Else What. Basically, we take an aspect we know from Pokemon's lore and ask, if this aspect is true, what else must be true about the world? How can we take what we know and expand it both logically and to our advantage? So the first question I'm going to put forward is, if professors exist, what else should exist? Such as, perhaps, the facility that grants them that title? The definition of a professor, at least in our world, is someone with the highest academic rank in a university, and or someone who holds a chair among the university's faculty. Yet, the mainline games make no mention of any universities. Well, okay, in black and white there is a mention of a Castellia University if you interact with a TV. Also, Pokemon Sword and Shield does feature a solid reference to Hammerlock University, but not really as a building you get to explore. It acts as one of many companies for the new job quest system. It makes sense that they'd call at least one company a university, since the Galar region is inspired by Great Britain, who is well known for some of the oldest universities around today. But really, they could have just replaced it with any employer's name inside the poker job system, and it wouldn't change a thing. Although I will say that the poker job system added some really nice world building details. I am also aware that Celadon University is mentioned in the manga, anime, and a magazine, but since it isn't mentioned in the mainline games, I'm going to move forward as if these mentions don't exist, because as far as the mainline games are concerned, they hardly exist at all, and they have never been directly associated with any of the professors. So, all these professors would have gotten their educational title from somewhere. Else, why would they call themselves a professor of Pokemon? Even if the definition of a professor is different in their world, they are still experts on Pokemon and need an education and probably funding from somewhere. I'm surprised that their history has never come up in conversation with them before, seeing as how they all share access to Oak's Pokedex technology. In Sword and Shield, you help Sonya become a professor, but by the end all she did was publish a book and poof, she was a professor. Who did she publish it with? Why does that count as criteria for becoming a professor? So, all that aside, what I want to do is to take this idea of a Pokemon university and root it into the core of Pokemon's narrative. One aspect of designing a reboot is planning for or future-proofing for sequels, and Pokemon is probably the franchise that relies on this more than any other. You can understand why they have been so light on the details when any detail they add now could write them into a corner one or two sequels down the line. However, I think we could take a different approach. We could give a backstory involving this university that extends in scope over multiple games and use it to create logical reasons and motivations for many characters. Keeping in mind everything I mentioned in the Remapping the World episode, now imagine in the first game of the reboot we have a new land, new Pokemon, but a familiar approach and some returning characters to start us off. Professor Oak has just completed his Pokedex invention and it's now ready for field testing. It is your assignment as his young understudy to go about the exhausting task of catching as many Pokemon as you can in the area. He has had prototypes in the past, and they are filled with information on many Pokemon, if not practically all of them, all catalogued from his research and the expansive library of the university. However, the point of the field test is not to fill the Pokedex with what they already know, but to see if the invention works as intended, to record vast amounts of information about Pokemon beyond what they had ever recorded before if not also have it confirm, independently, what they already knew. It has to perform well in the event a new Pokemon is discovered, for example, Mewtwo. Keep in mind, with entirely new regions, cameos can be fun. Plus, the game developers know that they want breeding and baby Pokemon from the start, so a reboot can work that lore into the first game's story. 
the professor wants to see how the Pokedex performs with the study of Pokemon breeding, because he already knows Pokemon lay eggs, and always has ever since his mother gave him the talk about the birds and the beedrills. So they task you with taking on the job to see what extra details the Pokedex might glean from the activity. Speaking of Pokedex recordings, this leads into my next idea. So, if true, else what? If the Pokedex automatically records data on Pokemon Court, shouldn't it record more than just one fact about any specific Pokemon throughout the game? What if you had multiple Pokedex entries per Pokemon? Now I am aware that Pokemon Home has something to this effect, but I'm not talking about the different ways you can organize your national decks, or how you can view their moves and abilities, or how you can see what regions and areas you can catch them in. All of that is fantastic, don't get me wrong, I would keep all that great stuff in there, but I'm talking about something different here. Imagine again if you were two thirds of the way through the game, and you happen to put a Pidgey into your party with three other flying types. The Pokedex bleeps at the bottom corner of the screen and lets you know that a new entry has been added to Pidgey's file. You learn that it is a bird most comfortable in a flock. Earlier in the game, you had put it in your party with a Caterpie, and you received an entry for both of them about the predator-prey relationship they have with each other. Finally, towards the end, your Pidgey file gains an entry from an NPC you talked to or a book on the shelf you read mentioning that Thanks to human interference, Pidgeys can be found almost anywhere on the planet. That same entry could probably be said for Rotata. This turns the game mechanic of the Pokedex into an element that complements the narrative. I believe this would help the player not just feel like they are going about capturing Pokemon, but actually doing the job of studying them, should the player care to invest the time. After all, isn't the classic introduction to the games one of the professors talking to you about the many mysteries to Pokemon that has yet to be discovered? Finally, having a real reason to click on every bookshelf and talk to every NPC as you never know what might trigger a new Pokedex entry. Thinking back to how this could narratively tie into the sequels, I think it is rather easy to put it in without dumbing it down. Due to how successful the original Pokedex proved itself to be, the Pokemon University Pokeversity? Has more funding for ongoing field research. Thus, the player is taking the role of a new understudy in each new region. Another element to consider about the sequels is the Pokemon Bank, or Pokemon Home, or whatever, that idea of a system. For those who want to catch them all, what if the bank was held by the university and you could upload your Pokedex research into a central hub? A Growlithe you catch in one game has their Pokedex entry updated to your account and across all connected games. Encountering another in a later game becomes optional. I think that one of the issues that people had about Pokemon being missing from Sword and Shield was that anyone who enjoyed completing their Pokedex in a game could not. This idea of a university account is placing that Pokedex not in the game, but the larger universe. I would also hope that it makes completing the Pokedex a less daunting task. You only need to catch what you don't have in that generation, or simply focus on those extra Pokedex entries. Game Freak and the Pokemon Company dropped the extremely marketable and exciting gotta catch em all slogan around the same time when the number of Pokemon got high enough that such a goal became unreasonable to request of their players. Under this premise, it can come back with a fury. And if you were surprised just then when I said that the phrase gotta catch em all was dropped, so was I when researching this. It was abandoned as early as Generation 3 and hasn't been used for the game since. The slogan made a temporary return in advertising and the anime during Pokemon X and Y, but otherwise, it's pretty well dead. Each mainline game of the series so far has been individuals working separately in their own story to fill the Pokedex and become a champion. So why not, instead, spin it as a team effort on each new understudy's part to get the job done? The players themselves become a legacy of understudies working together. When a new player joins at a later generation, they are joining a community with a rich history to trade and learn from, perhaps being inspired to do their best to contribute to it as well. On the else if of having a university, I have just two final notes how this narrative could specifically involve the player, and how it could encourage a stronger community of players. 
the university would need someone in charge of the Pokemon Bank and the Pokedex Data Hub, a head of research, if you will. This could be you, not the protagonist, but you, the player. You are in charge of contacting professors across all the regions to find youthful, talented understudies that could go about helping your work. At the start of every new game, you could connect it to your university account and information would be exchanged. The professor could mention you by name to their understudy and how the Pokedex data hub is under your management and care. I would hope that this would make each game in the series greater than the sum of its parts. Each new protagonist slash understudy works to fill in the gaps and contributes to your Pokemon adventure overall. Finally, if the Pokedex has a central hub of information you're in charge of, as each new game adds a lot of information to discover, the community would likely want to share with the world what unique circumstances unlocks new information. There could be hundreds of secrets in each game just waiting for a large number of people to investigate it all. I suppose, in the end, the community already works together to share battle strategies with team builds, moves taught to Pokemon, and already shares secret tips for how to catch every Pokemon. So why not make them professors in zoology too? Thank you so much for your time on this journey into world design. There is a lot more on the way. Let me know in the comments your thoughts on this. Would you be interested in being the head of research for the Pokemon University? Would you enjoy investigating a world for extra information to be added to a Pokedex? Or, of course, you could explain why you don't like anything I just said. Have at it, I'll read it. I'll be doing more of the If True Else What in future episodes, but I would like to hear what possible avenues you might want explored in Pokemon. Of course, please leave a comment below, like this video, hit the bell awesome, and most importantly, subscribe to my channel, because if you don't, you're going to make my Wooloo cry. Don't make her sad. Make her happy by subscribing. Now, continue to be wonderful, treat each other with kindness, have a beautiful day, I'll see you next time. Today's post credits dedication goes to my script editor, Jay Hall, who has done a wonderful job of not only making my rambles more coherent, but also teaching me how to write them better. Thank you, Jay. I'm eternally grateful for making sure that my content is always the best it could be. All my love to you and everything you have done and will do.